Praise the Lord. You got me on? Can y'all hear me? Praise the Lord. What an awesome God. I, I'm thankful tonight uh, just for God, for who He is to us. You know, we don't deserve half what we get, or probably any of what we get, really. But He still supplies. He still brings what we need. Um, how many is glad that God don't supply your need according to your, the way you act? <laughs> Can I raise both my hands? I'm so glad that He don't just... But you know what? He, he sees us and He knows where we're at, what we need. and he just. I'm so thankful for my family and I am thankful for my boys. Thankful for my wife and uh, all these guys. Thanking you, thankful for, for me, your pastor. But I'm telling you, I wouldn't be nowhere near the man I was if it wasn't for my wife. She's my right arm. I can call her and she'll help me do anything I need done. I'm so thankful for that. And she gives me good ideas. You know, she even, someday, she even corrects me when I need correcting. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful I got a wife that says, Now, Brother Hunt, you need to do da 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 da. And I say, Okay. You're right. And, uh, and, and she say, Will you say that one more time, please? And I say, You're right. Amen. But you know what? I'm thankful for that kind of relationship we have. 25 years I've been married to the same woman. Amen. Thankful for that. And she is a, a great lady of God, and I appreciate her. And I will say this what you see is what you get, guys. She's an, a true, true woman of God. She follows the Word of God, precise. She don't try to bend this a little bit to make it fit her flesh. And uh, she is who she is. I'm thankful for that tonight. I want to read just uh, one verse if you'll stand for the reading of the Word tonight. I'm not going to preach, really. Give me ten minutes. Uh, I'm so, I didn't know thank, uh, testimony service was going to go that long, but I'm thankful it did because I'm glad you guys testified tonight. I don't know if I scared you into it after I said you better testify or what, but uh, it, it really and truly we're... Uh, well, let me just preach about it tonight. From the First Thessalonians 5 and 8, if the brother child will pull it, there it is, if... In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Everybody said amen. amen. You can be seated. And before I start preaching tonight, I'd like to say it's good to have uh, our, my friend Patrick with me tonight. Uh, he uh, Facebooked me last or one day this week. I got that right, didn't I, Patrick? I thought I remembered and said, um, I was listening to your sermon last Wednesday night, or the sermon I preached last Wednesday night. He says, and it reminded me back home, and I want to come visit your church. And so I'm thankful he did. And uh, from uh, that just one service, God just touched him, and I'm thankful they're here. Him and his, uh, I don't know, their friends, sister, wife, wife, okay. And good, glad you guys are with us. Give them a hand for showing up tonight. Good to have you guys. Of course, it's good to have everybody. I, it's a dangerous thing to call names because you'll leave somebody out, but... Uh, it's good to have everybody. But in all things, everything, give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you. And I thought about this tonight. I thought, what could I preach on Thanksgiving? You know, two days before Thanksgiving. And I want to tell the church, I'm going to title this, uh, The Power of Thanksgiving. The Power of Thanksgiving. How many knows there's a power in Thanksgiving? I said it, I said it, I gave you a fair warning. I said everybody needs to testify because you're overcomers by your testimony. We really can't complain if we don't be thankful, if we're not thankful, because if you really want to overcome your situation and your needs, just begin to thank God for what you have and where you're at and what you're going through. You know, somebody told me the other day, I thank God that I'm going through what I went through because now I know God used that to put me to another level or put me to this other uh, uh, situation in my life. And I'm thankful for that. And I, since we had such a long testimony service, I won't read all the scriptures I gave Brother Child. I may get you to pull out one in a minute. But if you go to John chapter 6, you'll see where Jesus comes up and to the Sea of Galilee, which is the uh, a Sea of Tiberias. And He comes here, up, up here and he comes with the disciples up into the mountain and he looked back and he sees a group of a multitude, the Bible says, of men coming toward him, coming his direction and he looks at the disciples and he says how are we going to take care of them? How are we going to feed them? What, what are we going to do for these multitude that's coming? And one of them looked up and says, well, you know, uh, 200 penny worth is not going to feed this group. And, and I was thinking, undoubtedly, that must be what they had in their treasury or something. Uh, this is all we got is 200 penny worth. And, and whatever that equals up to, you can study it out and find out, I'm sure. But how are we going to feed them with this? Even that won't feed them, this multitude that's coming. 
And when they get there and, and they get together and one of the disciples said, Hey, I did notice something though. I, I noticed there's a little boy down here had a lunch that's got two fish and five loaves of bread. And, and everybody here has probably heard this story, but have you ever thought about how it really took place? Which Jesus says, go get it. And he brought it to him. And in verse 11, if you'll pull that one up, brother, brother Child, I think I've got it on for you. Verse 11 of this chapter says, And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, right then when he gave the thanks, you see, was it when Jesus took the loaves that automatically it began to multiply? No. But I believe when he began to give thanks, he, the Bible said he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples took them and set them down, and likewise of the fishes and much they, as they would. And they were all filled with disciples, gathered up the fragments that remained, that nothing be lost. And you read on, you find out that they gathered up 12 baskets of fragments. And church, we, we, you got to understand something here. I believe the miracle of this multiplication here that took place from two fish and five loaves it was, a, it was an addition, was a result that I believe the supernatural had begun to break into the uh, natural. Amen. And so many times we got to understand something. When the supernatural comes in, how does it come in? I mean, let, let me just take a pause right here. How many times, and I'm preaching to myself right now too, but how many times have you sit down and forgot to bless your food before you ate? Have we all done that? I hope it's not a regular routine for you because uh, some of you I've ate with, every time I eat with you, you're starting to eat before we bless food. And I hope that's not a regular routine, but I've forgotten myself. I have. And I kind of feel bad too. I mean, real bad. I really do. And I ask the Lord, bless this within me as well, you know, because I forgot to pray. But thankfulness is a very, is a powerful thing about being thankful. The Lord looked at him and, and what happened was the supernatural began to break in on the natural. Church, that's what we need to happen here at our church every service. The supernatural needs to break in on this natural thing that's happening. Because when we begin to give thanks, what we just did right now tonight, every one of you that gave thanks, now I'm sorry for those of you that missed your opportunity, but every one of you that gave thanks tonight, you're fixing to be multiplied some things in your life. Praise God. Are you ready now? Does anybody else want to testify? <laughs> Oh, I missed it. I missed it. But you see how much it is that we miss what God can do. I mean, think about this in the natural for a minute. If, if you always done something for somebody and they never thanked you, what would that bring up in your mind? Well, see if I do anything else for them. Could it be? Could it be when Jesus does something for us? I'm thankful tonight that He has overlooked my ignorance and overlooked my shortcomings and overlooked my things of life. Uh, but could it be the more we do for God, the more He does for us? The more we thank Him, the more He does for us. The more we give Him... Come on, think about it. Not only did God power produce enough food to feed 5,000 people because He blessed... And it's not even counting the children and the, and the spouses that were with them or the wives. But after He got done feeding all of them, the Bible says He took up 12 baskets of scraps. Now how many disciples were there? 12 disciples. When he, when he got through feeding them, he said, go get on the boat. Well, guess what? They had a basket of scraps to take a piece. All because the Lord said, let me bless it. Let me thanks, turn thanks to it. And God turned around and blessed it. And church, I'm going to tell you, it takes faith at times to have an attitude of thanksgiving. Sometimes when, when, when you're in a situation, it's hard to have a gratitude or a thankful spirit because everything else around you is failing. You see, it seems like the more God blesses us, the moment we stomp our toe, we want to complain about the stomp toe, but we forgot about the other nine that God's doing good things for. Come on, think about it. Oh, this toe. Oh, this toe. Well, thank God for the nine that you got that's not hurting. Y'all ever thought about it? Think about it, because we always complain about the aches and the pains and the low times. But I, I still believe the song, all of the good things outweigh the bad things. I want to talk nothing but good things tonight. In a conversation with someone today, they said it's, it's amazing how you always can remember bad stuff. But good stuff is always just kind of fades out of your head. Why? Because we're built like that. We're built in our, this body that we built. That's why we have to be thankful for everything. That's why we should be thankful even in the small things. 
And uh, I remember one time, and, and we had a visiting minister, Sister Hunt. You remember when we was growing up, this little uh, elderly lady came. And believe it or not, she was probably, what, 65, maybe I say, maybe even older than that. But she was teaching children. So don't think you're too old to teach children's church. Some people say, well, I'm going to leave that up to Sister Sammy. You never get too old for children. She was about 65, and I think we had uh, quite a few get the Holy Ghost that week. I forget uh, how many, but we had a lot get the Holy Ghost the week she came. And she'd done a, a flannel graphs on a board. And she put up Jesus on the board and she'd talk about Jesus. Take Jesus down, put up Peter, and she'd talk about Peter. And, and she, it was great. Everybody's just like, I'm talking about adults, was all into her message that she was preaching. But I remember this, and this has been years ago that she was teaching this. The one testimony she had, she says, be thankful in everything. She was talking about thanks. And she says, you know what I did one day? She says, I saw a penny on the parking lot. She said, I picked the penny up. And a lot of us, we're like this. Oh, there's a penny. I just ain't bending over to get a penny. But she didn't. She says every time she sees a penny, she stops. And she picks it up off the ground. And she shouts, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And puts it in her pocket. Now, that ain't a lot to shout about. But she says, I do know this. If I shout over the penny, God's going to send me a dollar. If I shout over the dollar, God's going to send me a hundred. If I worship, be thankful. And I'm telling you, there's multiplication big time in thankfulness. When you're thankful, God turns it around. Let, let me just close with this right here. Uh, think about the ten lepers in uh, uh, Luke chapter 17 and 11 and through 19. Read it when you get home. We won't read it tonight, but read it when you get home. Think about the lepers. Here they are. They're out here. God comes up and heals, touches their body and heals them and gives them a touch. All ten of them was blessed. All ten of them was touched in their body. So Jesus sitting here and one comes back and gives him praise and thanks him for the touch that he gave him. Jesus even looks back and says, did I not touch nine of the, uh, ten of you guys? Where's the other nine at? What happened to the other nine? And the guy probably couldn't have an answer. But Jesus looks at him and says, now that you came back, and you thank me for touching your body. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make you whole. You see, they were touched to start out with. They only got touched. But I believe when they begin to, he said, now you can be made whole. I'm just, I'm just crazy like this, I know, but I believe a nose started growing back. I believe fingers started growing back. You know, leprosy, they say, just makes parts of your body just fall off. But I, I believe when God does something, He does it right. Amen. Amen. He doesn't do it halfway. And I believe tonight, church, when He says, now that you've came back, and you have thanked me, and you have loved me, you wasn't ashamed of me, and I'm not going to be ashamed of you. All right. And I'm here to tell the church, those of you who testify tonight, you are going to be blessed. I believe that. When you come back to thank God, hey, I don't know why I had to go to the doctor's office. You see, she could have stood up and complained in her testimony. Oh, I had to waste my day and ride all the way down to Poplar, way down in Memphis. You know, that's, that's a long way for a lady, your, your status and your age, you know, out by yourself on the road. She could have had a complaint, a complaint. But you know what? Did y'all catch what she said? I thought about this. She, had, she had, uh, was able to witness to people all day there. You see what I'm saying? Because God used her even though she was in her circumstances. Church, I'm going to tell you, no matter our situation, if we will learn to be thankful for it. Some Sunday mornings or some Wednesday nights, I don't know whether to pass out cheese and crackers to go with all the wine or, or blow balloons up and have a party because everybody's happy. I'm talking about me too. I have those days too. But if we can learn, Sister Turner, if we can learn as humans to say, God, I'm thankful. Hey, I don't have to have a bank full of money to be thankful. I don't have to have a, a, a complete bill of health 100% to be thankful. Because you see, I'm sure if I, if I look long enough, uh, I'll find something that don't feel too good on my body. Amen. And can I tell you, nothing right now is hurting on my body. I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful I have no pain right now in my body. Hallelujah. But you know, if I look long enough, I can find it. I'm thankful for what God's done. I want to be thankful where we're at tonight. I heard it all across the building. I'm thankful for where God's brought me. I'm thankful for what God's doing. And can I tell you tonight, I'm thankful for where God's taking me to. 
Because I know He's not going to leave me where I'm at. I'm thankful for what He's going to do. Amen. God's getting ready to do greater things we can even imagine. And I want to close tonight with this church to tell the church in everything, God is working together for our good in everything. He says in uh, Romans 8.28 that, that if we can love Him, if we hang on to Him. Can you pull that Scripture up, brother? My mind just went blank. I, I had it quote in my mind. All things work together for the good of them who love God and are thee called according to His purpose. There you go. That's what it is. And if we can do that tonight, love God, trust everything's going to work out to the good. If we love Him, no matter what the situation is, we must have by faith, believe this and respond. Not only believe that He's able, but we also must respond by giving thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is very important this time of the year. I challenge every person here that's going to have Thanksgiving somewhere Thursday. I challenge you at your home, at your house, at your mother's house, at your father's house, tell them, let's take a time out and let's just have testimony service. Let's be thankful today. What is this day about? I read today as I begin to read through some different literature I was looking at. Uh, this one guy wrote about Thanksgiving. He says, it's amazing how we can be thankful on Thursday. So thankful for what God's done. But by daybreak Friday morning, we are in another rat race. See, the world's changed it from Thanksgiving, relaxing for the weekend and enjoying family together, to Friday morning, but before daybreak, stores are opening up and they're fighting each other for this or that. They're fighting for this and they're going to get there. It's amazing how many people can be at a store at 5 o'clock in the morning but not at church at 10 o'clock in the morning. This is what this guy was saying. I'm just telling y'all, repeating, all of you guys are, none of y'all are like that. Nobody here is going to get up that early and go shopping, I know. Shopping, just you don't have that zeal. You do have that zeal about God, but not shopping. But we are going to have an uh, early sunrise service Sunday morning at 5 o'clock if anybody wants to come. Just kidding, I'm not going to be here. Seriously though, we're thankful, right? We're thankful, but it, what's going to happen that day after Thanksgiving? It gets back to the rat race. I got to have that iPad. I got to have that computer. I got to have that big screen TV that's on sale. I got to have this. I got whatever you're wanting. But the thing is, is where is our Thanksgiving at? Do y'all know what brought Paul and Silas out of, out of the jail? They was praising God and giving Him thanks in the middle of their situation. Because I'm going to tell you, if it had been you or me probably in that jail, we would have just rotted there. Because we were beaten, we was tore up, we was sad, we was lonely, we dark, I can't believe God. I, I did all of this and you put me here. But when they learned, you know what, Sal, uh, uh, Silas, I'm not sitting here. Silas, you ready? We're going to sing a chorus. I don't know, maybe Paul had to teach him a chorus. I don't know. I don't believe so. I believe he was ready. He said, we're going to sing. Don't, don't, don't give up on me, Silas. Don't give up on me, Paul. We're going to win this thing. We're going to give thanks tonight. And we're going to see a great victory in our lives. And guess what? They did. You're talking about a jailhouse rock. They had a jailhouse rock that night. That place shook. The doors came open. It scared the guards. They didn't know what was going on. But at, when, at the end of the day, he was having dinner with a guard and getting his family saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Why? Because they just wanted to give some thanks. Y'all want to see a great church? Let's be thankful. Let's be thankful in all things. Praise God. I'm thankful for my brothers and sisters here tonight. I'm thankful for our children tonight. I'm thankful when I say children's church can be dismissed, that whole wall just lines up with children. I'm thankful when I say youth come up to the front three rows. They jump up without hesitation. They run up here and they want to have church. I'm thankful for that. Didn't even argue or, or, or anything with me last Sunday night. That was awesome. Just, just jump right in. I'm so thankful for that. You see, because I know if I could be thankful for that, but eventually the children's church is going to be lined up around this wall. Sister Sammy's going to be real white-headed by the end. But, but I guarantee you, if she's white-headed, she's still going to be lining up and going. She's not going to let that stop her. And church, whatever you do, keep being thankful. No doubt in my mind, from the youngest to the oldest, has got something you can be thankful about. And some of you didn't make it tonight to testify because I understand you're shyness and don't really have that speaking ability or whatever but I am going to give you one more chance 
to come to the front and just lift your hand in your own way and say, Lord, I thank you tonight for being my God. And whatever else you want to be thankful for tonight. We're going to have a we're not going to have a salvation plan unless you need the Holy Ghost. You can get it right in the middle of being thankful. But I want us to come to the altar and offer up some thanks tonight to our Lord in closing that God will be with us through this holiday. But we just thank you for it. Come on, let's make it 100% in Jesus' name. Sing it, sis. Everybody sing. 
tonight. Amen. I know the service was a little different tonight, but I think it was good just to take a pause and give God the thanks. And uh, everything you thank God for, you look for it to triple back to you. Blessings on top of blessings. I believe that there's power in thanksgiving. Amen. Let's be thankful. I believe that uh, we ought to have 364 Thanksgiving days of thanksgiving. I really do. I think every day should be thanksgiving of our lives. Not just today but every day. But we do set this aside to be thankful and have thanksgiving and we thank you tonight for participating in this Tuesday night service. And I know some have schedules they couldn't change, but uh, we, we uh, will make it up to them later. But Sunday is going to be a great day. Uh, we're going to have an old-fashioned Sunday. Uh, men are going to be dressing old-fashioned. Women are going to dress old-fashioned. We're going to have a po' boy dinner afterward. Now I was, I'm not this old, okay? Brother Hey Slip, you might can help me out. But in the older days, they tell me, they tell me that the, me, the women waited on the men more. Is that true? Is that true? Y'all can, y'all can. So, so y'all think we should. <laughs> Wait, we're old fashioned Sunday though. So us men will go sit down Sunday and the women will bring our soup to us. But you know, I. I'm probably going to go get my own because I realize I may not get fed if I don't. So, Well, they're supposed to wait on us. We did beat them. That's right. We beat the women last year in our offering giving too. Y'all remember that? Y'all never waited on us either. It's too late. It's, the year's not over yet. <laughs> but anyway, we are going to have a good time Sunday morning. The service starts at 10. We're going to have a Sunday school panel. And it's going to be really good. I'm not even going to tell you. It's going to be, I mean, it's just going to be great. You don't want to miss it. Our children are going to have children's church at 10 o'clock. And the rest of us are being here for the panel. But we're going to have a panel. We have uh, some ministers on the panel. And then after that, Brother Motes, which is an elder minister, he'll be preaching for us Sunday morning and uh, having a good time. Then after that, we're going to have a good time of fellowship, soup, crackers, and just light stuff because we're going we're gonna to eat a lot tomorrow and Thursday. So we're going to kind of have it light on Sunday. But we want all of y'all to make sure you bring what you had on the list. If you haven't signed the list, stop by there and bring some kind of soup or whatever's on the list. It'd be awesome. We're going to throw it together and we're going to eat till it's all gone. In Jesus' name. All right. Anything else to be said? Sister Turner? Rejoice Chorale has got to practice. You guys are singing Sunday. Uh, any elder that wants to be, is it 50 and up? Fitting up can join this choir. Please see Sister Turner. It's for this Sunday. They're going to be singing some old-fashioned songs, having a good time this Sunday. All right. Nothing else? All minds clear? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm thankful for you. All right. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. God bless. <laughs>